all right half and half not fans i wanted to do a video that's kind of different than the rest now i've already done a video you know about congratulating the show on making it to the 100th episode but one thing i've noticed in regards to fan reaction to the show over the past maybe three to four episodes has been just their overall reaction to the i guess you could say plot of the haves and the have nots uh what i mean by that is that a lot of fans, and again, I wouldn't be doing this video if I didn't consistently see this on a weekly basis after every episode on, you know, Facebook and Twitter and then my YouTube comments is, what do you think of the overall plot of the show now? Do you think it's gotten a bit too ridiculous? Do you think that it's not really what it used to be? And uh, this video is about kind of going over, you know, the first hundred, you know, well, I guess if I'm not mistaken, we have 101 episodes that are out that have been on the air if I'm not mistaken so kind of looking back at where we were to where we are now I guess you could say kind of looking at some of the basic plot points of the haves and the have nots drastic character you know development some characters who have just seemingly disappeared so again I'm just going to mention a few things in this video and, I, and again this video is just my question to you all not a theory this is I guess you could say more like in a well, honestly, if I'm not mistaken, based off my channel, this is one of the few, if not the first, opinionated video I've done. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. Now, the show still has my attention. I will say that much. But I have never seen such an uproar in terms of the haves and the have not community. And again, the reason I'm, you know, always looking at the groups on Facebook and the Twitter is because I do these videos and I love seeing, you know, what people are talking about because that really helps me know what to do these videos on. So again, this is not to bash the show. This is not what this is about. This is to bring up something that the community as a whole has been talking about. And I just wanted to get my fan base in terms of, you know, the ones who follow me on my blog, Facebook, as well as YouTube. So one of the biggest complaints I've seen from fans every week is the whole, and again, I see this comment, I know at least five or 10 times a day on at least one social media outlet. You know what? These episodes are getting boring because it's the same recycled dialogue over and over again. I can't lie that is pretty accurate what i mean by that is you know and let's say two two episodes ago the same two characters will talk about a certain plot point in terms of you know hey you know what justin is trouble you know he's going to follow you around blah 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 and then next thing you know you hear the same kind of dialogue either between the same characters or one character and another like for example you have uh veronica and jeffrey talking about justin one episode flash forward then you have justin encountering jeffrey and then he tells him what the mom said and you pretty much is rinse and repeat with the script and i mean i don't know the more i think about it the more fans are right because again i know some people on like social media that tweet me every week and they say you know what hey can can you do an episode review because honestly i skipped the episode but from what i've heard from so and so it's the same thing over and over again i hate to admit it that it, but that is kind of a valid point where the entire episode can go on but there might maybe only two to three scenes if that that are only worth watching i will admit in some episodes it does feel that way but, you know, I just want to bring that up because, again, a lot of people have brought that to my attention in terms of, yeah, you know, I'll still watch your videos and I'll watch the episode later this week. But, you know, it's really not something that's going to, you know, jump out at me. I will admit that I think last week's episode episode, well, excuse me, week before last episode 100 was better than when we just got episode 101. I mean, most people were looking forward to the elevator fight and seeing what Mama Rose was going to do to the body. And <sighs> I mean... I will admit that I do get a bit uncomfortable during the uh, the homosexual scenes between like Justin and I mean, hell, Lance. Here, here's a question I wanted to pose to you all. If you notice how adamant Jeffrey was to like um, push Landon away from him because he was drunk and trying to get with him. Why didn't he do the same thing to Melissa? Was it because he was so, you know, in the closet like, hey, I don't want anybody to know I'm gay. So because of that he let. And again, most people talk about, well, Jeffrey got raped. Or 
I'm like, well, technically, I don't think he got raped because, again, I feel like as a man, even if he and Melissa were both in a drunken state and he was all about being in the closet instead of letting her know he was gay, he could have stopped what went down, I will admit. So, you know, with that being said, oh, gosh, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked there. And another big thing that a lot of fans are talking about is the mom. I, I haven't seen put it this way. I haven't seen so much disdain or hate for a character since Quita. And I can't think of one person that likes Quita. A lot of people are talking about the new mom Rose, like she's over, she's overacting. I miss the old one. And as you'll see in the uh, right hand side of this video is a um, link to one of my old videos about the old mom Rose compared to the new mom Rose. I'm going to be honest. I don't have a problem with the new Mama Rose. I'm not saying the first one wasn't great because I loved how subtle. I will admit that the old Mama Rose was more reserved and subtle. But at the same time, you have to remember the Mama Rose from season two that we saw, you know, when Candace got abducted by the Malones is not the same Mama Rose that we're seeing now in this season reacting to Mitch being shot at. That's not me saying that. Oh, the different Mama Rose from season two to season, you know, whatever we're in right five or six. What I'm talking about is not the actress. I mean, the persona of Mama Rose, the uh, the uh, demeanor she has now and her role in the plot. Because if you remember, we only saw the old Mama Rose in all but maybe two to three episodes, if I'm not mistaken. And from then on, we just heard her, you know, over the phone with Jim and then over the phone with David when it came down to, you know, making sure the phones back at the tow company were back and running again. So honestly, I don't really see the hate between, well, with this new Mama Rose. In some ways, you know, the whole overacting thing. Well, again, the way I picture it is that Mama Rose is like the extreme version of Hannah. Could you imagine Hannah? Because again, her grandson got shot during the shootout. So I guess you could say there's a parallels between Mama Rose and Hannah. That's actually pretty interesting when you really think about it. And again, that's a major theme with the haves and the have nots across the board. And, you know, every episode, there's always two sets of characters who are going through a similar situation. Case in point, in the last episode, you had Erica and Veronica fighting over David. And then later on in the episode, well, actually more like next week's episode, you know, with Justin and Landon walking into his room, we're going to have Justin and Landon fighting over Jeffrey. I don't know what it is about the Harrington men, but the thirst is real. That's all I'm saying. Now, you know, this video has kind of been jumping all over the place, but I just wanted to address a lot of different, you know, key elements that some fans have been, you know, feeling lately about the series. Of course, one of the biggest things is how come Candace doesn't know about her baby? I will admit that that is a bit annoying, but at the same time, at the end of the last episode, it was nighttime. If I am not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, it's only been maybe 24 hours or so since the shootout. Because remember, at the end of the last season, it was the shooting itself and it was at nighttime. Then the following day or the following morning is when, you know, Kat, uh, Hannah woke up and he, she was at Catherine's, you know, new house that they're staying at. And then we just got to nighttime now. So, again, I could be wrong, but if I'm not mistaken, it's only been about 24 hours or so since that shooting. And plus, you know, that's, you know how the haves and the have nots is. Remember back in episode two, that's when, or episode three, if I'm not mistaken, that's where um, Jim told his family in the Harringtons that, hey, I'm running for governor. Davis running for lieutenant governor. That was back in season one, episode three. Look at how much went down and how long it took from Jim and David making their announcement to their family all the way to uh, Diana Winchill. I believe it was Diana Winchill when Jim finally got on television and announced that he was running for governor only to find that, you know, Celine, Carlos and the other son showed up on the TV to make him look bad. So look at how long I took if I'm not mistaken I was like season four or something like that or season three when that eventually happened so there's a lot of stuff that goes down between seasons so I just wanted to let you know that it is worth it but I will admit that its script is not perfect now kind of going back to you know the first few seasons things were 
a uh, crazy but at the same time they were a bit more clean cut you know you had you had the establishment of who was the haves who was the have nots okay we have character interactions we know who's who like you know wide and Amanda both have their own addictions uh, with Wyatt's being alcohol and substance abuse. Uh, Amanda, you know, s attempted suicide and just harming herself in general. You have Jim, who's a cheating bastard, who's running for governor. You have Catherine Cryer, who is the glue of the uh, Cryer household. But at the same time, she was falling apart with breast cancer. Enter Hannah, uh, the Christian maid, African-American, who helped her out, became her best friend. A real nod to the whole... um. Uh, a family that praised Tyler Perry movie. And then of course you have Benny who was, you know, the good child that was trying to help out his mom. But at the same time, he was pulling away at Candace from steering him in the wrong direction, but he was a hard worker. Of course you have Candace who was the antithesis of what Hannah represents. However, she was who Hannah used to be. Then you move on to the Harrington family. You have Jeffrey who was, you know, in the closet, an overbearing mother, but an intelligent lawyer in Veronica, and then more of a passive father kind of figure in David. Honestly, that was just the basis of the show. And then, of course, you want to throw in Celine and Tony, and you got a great mix. Season two, things got a little bit more intense. I'm not going to lie. It got a bit overshadowed with the whole, you know, covering up the Wyatt and Little Lizzie thing. And from there, you have the tensions forming between some of the quote unquote friends from season one with a rift coming between Veronica and Catherine in some ways, just a little bit, but some ways uh, when Maggie Day came into the picture because things really started to draw a line in the sand when it came down to, you know, which halves is going to come out on top. Season three got to the extreme kind of in the aftermath of Amanda's, you know, death, things got even crazier. I guess you could say that was around the time that Veronica started to take the position that Candace was in as the bad bitch, but also came in some of the mental capacities that Amanda had. And I can go on all day talking about this. So honestly, this show is all about, you know, homosexuality in terms of like being in the closet. You have uh, powerful political figures who do stuff under the rug and behind closed doors. Uh, season two really showed that evolution. I, to me, I feel like the shift of the show took a drastic turn when um jim had candace abducted by the malones that really showed the darker side of jim and that really escalated you know the game itself between candace and jim because after that you had him being abducted by war and then a back and forth and wow my head's just spinning and again this is just me talking not script it's just talking and that just shows you how drastic the show is one of the biggest things that, you know, caught me by surprise was the whole Veronica and Benny thing. I wouldn't even call it a relationship, but more like a fling. And Oscar entering the picture was, I felt like a great move. I felt like uh, it was almost like a uh, Green Ranger on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Once he entered the fray, things just changed for a whole new level. So all that's to say, all that's to say, in my humble opinion, I don't think that the show is as good as it was hear me out though hear me out what i feel like is just we've gotten to the point where we're past the 100th episode mark and a lot of the things that were you know relevant in the first part of the season really aren't relevant now or they've got been forgotten i wouldn't say, well maybe i shouldn't say forgotten more like they haven't been re-entered into the overall plot in a while, such as, you know, Tony and the kidney. Oh, how is Celine going to get back at Jim? What about all the money he's been paying her, you know, for years in child support? What about um, Catherine's breast cancer? Uh, what about the autopsy of Amanda? We never got word on that, not to mention that Jennifer Salison was killed off. So she was the one who told David that, hey, there's an investigation going on saying that Amanda's death was a murder not a suicide and literally I can go on all day just rattling off a list of Veronica's mother that's another one and <laughs> honestly again I could just go all day talking about this kind of stuff but I just wanted to raise the question to you because again that's why I did this video because I kept seeing this every week do in your honest opinion again I'm still going to watch the show especially since we know that Tyler is leaving own in a couple of years 
and most likely to show as well as if loving you is wrong is going with him. So I, I I feel like I've invested too much time and energy since episode one that I'm going to finish the series. So I don't want you to listen to this video like, oh man, this guy's just going to stop watching. I'm not going to stop watching this series. I'm not. So I just wanted to get your honest thoughts on it because even though I love this series with my heart, I'm not opposed to not bashing it, but kind of pointing out things that I really didn't care about. So I wanted to just get your opinion. What do you think is the show as good as it used to be? What do you think should change in order to make it better? Or maybe it's just going through a little bit of a phase right now because we started a new season. I'm not going to lie. When this season started, within the first two or three episodes, I was already excited. I mean, uh, there was great pacing. We got a lot of character interaction. Even though we changed locations where most of the scenes took place in the hospital, I just love the different combinations of, you know, you have two characters going at it. And personally, I loved it. So with that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please subscribe because I have more videos on the way and I will talk to you later.